I think the key thing to know is that the government's not being fair, and the reason for that seems to be that we live in what I call a petro state, and we have uh, politicians that take oil money from corporations directly, and it's not a crime here, and it should be a crime because it leads to policies like this that don't make any sense. And so, like, if people really wanted to pay for the highways fairly, the gas tax would increase because that would actually pay more for it because that's the, you know, 99% of the vehicles that are using the highways. And then um, you might see $2 or $3 gas, but it would get the highways paid for it with the gas tax. And the, the $60,000 that you'll make this year and the 90000 next year or whatever it'll be, is not going to pay for more than two kilometers of highway. So it makes no sense. It's just, uh, it, it, and it makes no sense because it isn't fair. And it isn't fair because the politicians deciding this uh, take uh, corrupt oil money. I think it's just politically biased in that way. It's completely politically biased. And um, that's the bottom line. And if people want to see the highways paid for fairly, then the gas tax should increase. And then this, this fee could be looked at in five or ten years, whenever it is that there's a, you know, a, a fair amount of EVs on the road, but it makes no sense right now. Yeah. Would you like, because I know some other trucks said maybe take that fee, keep it on, but take that fee and apply it to building more charging stations, like would you want to see that just removed, or would you want to see that reality? It makes no sense to apply it to charging stations. I had this question asked to me the other day too, and because we charge up about one out of a uh, hundred times at a public charging station. How is that going to pay for anything? P people who drive EVs don't use public charging stations for the most part. That's a gas station old way of thinking for someone who doesn't well, have a you travel, car. You're if you're traveling. Right. So then, yeah. And people are starting to explore again and you know and there's no infrastructure right now on the yellowhead highway so i mean you're you're literally taxing 400 people that and others who drive through the trans canada it, it's again it's it's extremely it, it's the most narrow tax i can think of right now like what other tax can you point to that only affects about 400 or 500 people Grab yes. Too. Yeah. J O H N K L E I N. But he's not on C. No, I'm. I'm just a uh, EV owner, and and actually, I'm also the president of the Regina Car Share Cooperative. Oh, okay. So you can actually throw my name on there because I'm here to represent Regina Car Share Co-op. Because they have their. EV there's there's our well. EV over there. We actually have two EVs, so now we'll our business will be paying three hundred dollars a year more, where it's just a small co-op with you know a few dozen members. And uh, so the government's added on a, 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 you know, a big fee to a small business that makes no sense because we're trying to do a good thing for the community, reduce air pollution and, and address climate change. And they've just increased our, our expenses. At, well, we are the ones you know, ma making the effort and the government's making absolutely no effort. What kind of impact does that have on the business having to pay that every year now? I, well, we haven't budgeted for it because it was just announced a week ago, so I don't know. Uh, hopefully, I, I mean, we should be able to continue to operate, but it's, you know, $300 more on our, our registration. That's a, you know, we're already paying 15% more because we operate a car share. We have to have U-Drive um, registration, which is like a rental car house. So that's 15% more than the base uh, registration cost anyway. So it's just, you know, it, expense after expense from this government. Is there anything else you'd add that I'm, you think I'm missing? Well, no, I, I bluntly covered most of it, I think. Um, if you give me another few seconds to regroup, maybe I can come up with something. <laughs> um, well, I cut, touched off how, like, it doesn't cover the expenses of repairing anything. The government takes corrupt oil money and other corporate donations, which are illegal elsewhere in the country. Uh, oh, here's some other good good info. So the um, the province, as you probably know, has had a clean energy rebate from the years of uh, 2008 to 2012. 
so the SAS party implemented it or, or allowed a, a, a clean energy vehicle or clean re, cleaner vehicle rebate that SPI would offer and it was ended and then they cancelled it and they haven't offered anything since and other provinces and even the federal government do offer those sort of uh, rebates for for cleaner vehicles so it uh, the person who cancelled that now is Canada's top oil, oil lobbyist after he left the government and went into his next job so that I mean it's a naked conflict of interest right there and I don't know if enough people know that because I think it explains what, what's going on here today. No, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for sharing your thoughts with me. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Fixing is just like...